I'm sure by now everyone watching this video has heard of the fix TF2 slash save TF2 movement. And I don't want to bore you guys with the same things you've heard other people say. So I'll try to keep it interesting for those who are unaware. The botting crisis has been an ongoing problem for Team Fortress 2 since the early days of the game in the form of idler bots and trading bots. But the bots which you've most likely heard about and seen in casual games are aim bots. These types of bots are set on ruining everyone's fun by mass joining casual and causing as much disruption as possible to a casual game in the form of message spam, mic spamming, false vote kicks, and of course, insta-killing enemies as sniper. In recent years, bot hosters have gone way more malicious in their ways through the form of using their bots to spread hate speech from TF2. <laughs> so you filthy niggas, better get off the <laughs> game. Hey guys, Mega Scatterbomb here. Something has been on my mind for a while. And it's the fact that George Floyd <laughs> and target people who they don't like. With Valve seeming to not care at all about the problem, and more preferring to take the easy route of adding community workshop creations to be packaged in seasonal updates and fix minor bugs, the reputation for this game has taken a turn for the worst. The beloved grandfather of video game shooters might as well be on its deathbed right now, as it seems like there's no light at the end of this tunnel, and cheaters and botters will further increase in numbers and worsen over the years, which is why the community has unanimously agreed to do yet another protest for the game, as this really is the only way to get Valve to even acknowledge how bad the cheating problem is. And clearly, being nice to them hasn't worked in getting things to change in years. When I say that TF2's reputation has gone for the worst, I really mean it. Go back a couple of years and people would associate this game as a fun, team class shooter that regularly gets updated and has a wonderful community with active developer support. But in modern years, it's known as a game which Valve barely cares about, with a huge cheating and bot crisis. This obviously deters a lot of newcomers to the game, especially with how unfriendly the game is in its current state to free to play, with bad features and of course, the bots. Thanks, mate. It really takes a special kind of appreciation for the game that goes far beyond simple gameplay to stick around and continue demanding change from the developers. But as I'm guessing most of you have already read the title, I'm going to go inside the mind of a hashtag save TF2 Duma and explain the arguments for each side thoroughly, and talk about why being nihilistic about the future of the game isn't helping anyone. Earlier when this year's save TF2 campaign first came to fruition, and the website save.tf first came up, out of curiosity, and just because I felt like spreading awareness for it, I talked about it in multiple TF2 related servers. These include servers like the official SFM Discord server, TF2 Tuba servers, and niche animation servers to gauge the general consensus for what people thought, and the differences in feedback really shocked me to say the least. For servers like Lazy Purples, the feedback for the protest was pretty good, with many people resonating with the message, along with Shodik server which did take the protests well, and people who didn't really care still sort of supported the idea of the protest, along with the TF2 Blender Discord server that had people who were really passionate about the movement. Now this makes sense, as entire Discord communities centered around TF2 definitely have people who are passionate about the game and are optimistic about the future. So, I thought the feedback would be around the same, maybe a bit less enthusiastic about the whole idea since the SFM server was full of a bunch of people who didn't care whatsoever about the game. But I still thought the feedback for the protest wouldn't be so bad, since you know, SFM comes pre-packaged with TF2 assets, and was released during the time official TF2 SFMs were really popping off. So now the question is, how did the SFM server take the hashtag fixed TF2 protest? Were they supportive of it, or did they despise it? I'll give you a second to guess. Well, if you chose the answer of them being supportive, you'd be entirely wrong. Bam! To the point where even mentioning the website in the general chat would cause hour-long arguments to unfold. Even the owner of the official SFM server, who supposedly loved the game, was against the movement entirely and saw it as a waste of time. Let's start by breaking down each of the arguments against Save TF2 and maybe theorize about why some people might think this way. Starting off with point number one, 
People have already tried multiple times protesting. Why do they think this time will be anything different? While it is true that the TF2 community has tried and failed two times already in protesting, if you take a step back and look at how those campaigns were managed, you'll start to understand why. The first and most infamous example is hashtag save TF2. Back in May 26, 2022, the community came together to spread the hashtag, and you might have seen this poster for it. Up to the point when this poster was made, the campaign was going in the right direction. But after that, it got derailed, and people forgot the true purpose of the actual events. Even I did. The movement went from addressing aimbots and cheaters to now showing you appreciation for TF2. And once Valve were aware of the protests and made a tweet on the official TF2 Twitter account, people stopped pressuring them. Then after that, Valve did what they best do and ghosted everyone. Two years after the tweet, nothing has been done. Apart from hiring a contractor who just added some quality of life fixes, which at best made it slightly harder for cheaters and bot hosters, and at worst, just fix some unknown bug from 12 years ago. The other safe TF2 campaign was on Reddit, and it hardly got any steam at all, and never really hit the same as the previous one did. After considering all of these mistakes, and how bad it really is getting on casual servers, the community has done things differently, and focus has changed from being less on saving the game, and more of fixing the game. Things have been done more differently, and more coordinated, with everything being explained in a clean, simplified way that even someone who hasn't touched a game once in their life can clearly understand the problems the game has. Save TF2 failed multiple times, but the first time, it didn't entirely fail, as some minor things were done to combat cheaters. Ultimately, there isn't any harm to trying this again, and the community would much rather try doing the same thing before, but much better, instead of just giving up entirely. TF2 doesn't deserve any more content patches or fixes, since it's a 17 year old game. The players should be happy with what they have right now. I swear none of these points are straw men, and these are actual things people have said in response to me bringing up the dire state of TF2. I don't really understand why this argument exists, but I'm just guessing it comes from people who barely know much about how functional TF2 is right now, and the age of the game doesn't really matter in all of this. Let me say an analogy that will make things more easy to understand for those who believe in the statement. If you were poisoned and were going to die in the next 17 minutes, would you give up entirely? Or would you do everything in your power to find a cure and survive even if the chances of you doing so weren't good? While I agree, TF2 has gotten more than enough content updates for its age and doesn't really need any more Jungle Inferno styled updates, I don't think anyone is happy with the current state the game is in. Especially since, even when we do get updates for the game, in the form of seasonal content patches, bot hosters are dead set on booting up as many spin bots as possible to prevent as many casual players from having fun. I can personally recount, as an Australian, that last year's Scream Fortress was literally borderline unplayable for the rest of the month as nearly every single casual lobby had been infested by bots. The very rare times I'll get clean matches would always have a bot or two joining in mid-game, and just made casual a test of reflexes by trying to kick the bot as quick as possible, before more and more joined in. I think a lot of people aren't happy with what they have right now, and the game is starting to lose more players each year, simply because you can't really be grateful for something you can't even play most of the time. I know community servers exist, but there aren't as many hosts in Australia that emulate the casual experience, and the ones which are, are usually always full or empty. TF2 won't die. You can still run dedicated servers for the game, and community servers exist for a reason. I don't know if this is a common argument, but I've definitely heard some people bring this up. And yeah, community servers and dedicated servers do exist for TF2. But how much of the player base would be willing to download programs to run unofficial mods or dedicated servers for TF2? And how many people would want to deal with the way most community servers are handled with insane amounts of plugins and shops? It all just gets repetitive and for me, at least the casual experience is much more fun and refreshing compared to community servers. Dedicated servers or mods 
aren't really my favorite. By dedicated servers, I mean things like servers for console versions of TF2 and the ones running the old versions of TF2. But I've never really played much on these as I like the way modern Valve TF2 servers are handled. A majority of players for this game come for the casual experience and Valve introducing official servers back in 2015 allowed for the TF2 player base to become as big and diverse as it is right now. Imagine if TF2 stayed off the way it used to handle servers, like how other Source games such as Day of Defeat or even Team Fortress Classic did, being that the players are the ones hosting servers instead of Valve. This would gradually take away from the vanilla experience that people want and subsequently, the human play count over time will more closely represent Day of Defeat or Team Fortress Classic's play count. Valve clearly doesn't care about this game anymore. It isn't worth it to spend all this effort adding a fix to bots and cheaters. Valve as a company definitely doesn't care about TF2 or even other Source 1 games. They're rather more focused on hardware and making Source 2 games. This would be fine if they at least put the bare minimum effort in maintaining that old stuff is at least playable when new loot crates and toys are constantly being shoveled into these games. It's reached a point where the community does a better job at detecting and banning spin bots and cheaters in their own servers. With Valve being the billion dollar company they are, they have no excuses to not make a functional anti-cheat. I mean they kinda did for Counter-Strike 2. It at least doesn't have the same level of botting that TF2 does. But the point being that maintaining a playable state for old games like TF2 is easily doable for Valve when they have all the resources in the world to do so. It's reached a point where the player base itself has to build third-party anti-cheat software for casual TF2. And if that doesn't prove that Valve is being lazy, I don't know what will. Now that we know the arguments for and against this year's Save TF2 protest, let's try to understand why there is this much hate against it, despite it objectively being executed much better and having lots of well-made videos about it already. Some people just aren't convinced that it's going to work out for some reason. Maybe it's because of last time's failures, or just people not caring about Team Fortress 2, but I've come up with my possible theories as to why so many people aren't so enthusiastic this time around. Nowadays, as time goes on, Team Fortress 2 becomes less of a fun childhood game and more like a money maker for content creators to latch onto to get the things they want and leave. It doesn't surprise me that alongside the game becoming more soulless and industrialized, the community surrounding the game is also following in its footsteps. From what I've seen, the majority of Doomers for the game obviously don't keep up with TF2 and have a very limited understanding for the severity of the bot crisis. The game will of course keep being relevant through meme SFM content and just because of its sheer influence it had in the FPS genre, but nearly all of the Doomers for this year's protest were the kinds of people who only care about Team Fortress 2 through the countless SFM shitposts and because of how much of an audience it still has online. These people really don't care about what's good for the game and instead of participating in something that has the potential to change the future of the game for the long term, most of them would rather stick to the short term benefits being what we have right now. A decent class based shooter experience that has a chance to get ruined by bots every now and then but still has a big audience that will watch the videos related to it. The people who are nihilistic towards the future of TF2 and follow the mentality of the game is already dying so what's the point in it all? Mostly have limited knowledge about this year's protest and completely miss the mark when judging it. The purpose of it in the first place being to spread awareness about the borderline unplayable state of TF2 and making Valve look bad to those who don't already believe so. Even if Valve chooses to do nothing, the community won't be so complacent this time around and will make a big deal out of Valve's negligence that will reach those who aren't in the TF2 fanbase. There is of course one group of people who I failed to talk about while on the topic of TF2 Doomers. This of course being the people in between being against the movement and supporting the movement. This isn't very common, but these types of people do deserve an honorable mention as they don't really help much, but don't hate the game in any way. 
I can't really go into detail with these people who are in between, since there aren't many good examples, and each person is different in their own way, but I just thought they deserved an honorable shout out when talking about hashtag SaveTF2 Doomers. Overall, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Leave a comment below to tell me what you think of the matter, and as always, have a good one. I'll be anticipating the week of the protests, and I hope to see you all there when the day eventually rolls by.